Hello, everybody. My name is Jennifer Hill, and I'm with the Huron Valley Chamber of Commerce, and I'm really excited today to welcome our community leaders, and we're going to be talking about the state of our communities right now, and I think it's a, um, a really great topic, and I think a lot of people are interested in hearing this um, seminar. Um, so I'd like to welcome our four leaders that have been invited today to talk. Um, we're gonna ask them four questions and we'll give each of them time to talk. And then at the end of the presentation or the seminar, we're gonna open up um, the um, microphone so that everybody can ask questions and get maybe get some answers to questions that you might have about your communities. So I'd like to welcome Don Green. Um, he is with Milford Township. I'd like to welcome Christian Worth from Milford Rick Hamill from Highland and Anthony Noble from White Lake Township. So I'm going to go ahead and mute you all if that's okay. And um, Okay. So everybody, you ready to go? Okay, so the first question that um, I have for you all is, it's been over, and I've written them down so that I'm, I sound smart. Um, it's been over a year since our initial COVID shutdown. And um, I want you to tell me how your communities have responded and pivoted during that time. Um, should we start with, I'll start with, the first person to my right, Don Green. Uh, the community's responded uh, fairly well. Um, we've had a few people that were upset over uh, the offices not being open, but if people do make an appointment, we still let them in and we've carried on with our normal business. I've been in every day, um, taking care of all my business. Um, haven't had any really disgruntled people, which is surprisingly because being cooped up, people have a tendency to get a little antsy. But all in all, things have gone very well. We've uh, been plugging along and we're gonna be bringing four people in the office uh, every day starting next week. Okay, um, Rick, how about you? We can't hear you, Rick. You have to unmute. Sorry about that. I there you, you go. Thought you were controlling that part. You shut me off. No, I'm letting you guys do it. Turn my stuff <laughs> back on. All right. So um, I'll kind of pick up where Don left off. There, our community pretty much the same. Very, very. I'd say docile considering the uh, the conditions and and people being tied up at home and. Um, our offices have been open the entire time. We followed all of the uh, uh, MIOSHA requirements that uh, have been handed down and the governor's uh, restrictions. And uh, we've been able to deal with pretty much everything by allowing one person in the office at a time. Uh, we have fortunately two different doors to enter. And so our clerk and treasurer's office can handle, you know, those, uh, that information at their end. And then the building department has a separate entrance. So uh, it allows us to handle a little more people than just one in the building. So uh, we've also switched a lot of stuff to online uh, capability. You can't necessarily just uh, get every permit online, but you can get the documents to fill out. Um, we've had, a lot of activity in terms of uh, building and especially uh, during 2020, all the people staying at home were built. Uh, they turned into the deck building spree of the, of the century and uh, home remodeling spree. And so that was a very positive um, thing, I think. And I think probably Don's community, everybody has been doing the same. That's why there's no materials left and everything is to the moon in pricing. Um, no riots from uh, people wanting to be uh, 
uh, let out of their homes. And uh, I think that uh, being in a rural community like we are, we have a lot of access to state land and open land and parks and people are able to get out and canoe and kayak and walk and and that's a good ventilation tool so i think that's really been uh, critical here so um i think some of the things that uh, the community's done is our dda and uh, and the township and oakland county have stepped up by offering some uh, grants to help uh, businesses out and um, i think that it seems like the locals have uh, really supported uh, the carry out restaurants. Uh, I, my, my favorite place uh, uh, to eat is Duke's and because I know that every meal is going to be a good meal for me. And, and when I say, let's go out to dinner to my wife, she never says no when I say Duke. So I think that's a good, but uh, we do visit other restaurants. And, but I do know that uh, when Duke's first, uh, closed. I was very concerned about them. And it turns out that uh, the owner, Mike, is, uh, was able to turn it into a, a carry out uh, success. So, uh, and he still does a lot of carry out. And so that's a good sign. I think the other others uh, um, stood up and did the same. So uh, kudos to our business owners and especially to the residents that have stood up for uh, their local businesses. And um, even Don, I know, comes to Duke's because we run each other there. Um, probably Even one. Don. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> he, he can probably attest to the, the food there. So, um, but I think that's uh, the business owners. It's uh, the irony is that some of the ones that you would think to start would have a hard time had their best years ever. And uh, I think the landscaping businesses have probably had their best years ever. Um, a lot of the builders have had uh, great years, and and so uh, there's a few that uh, have suffered severely, and some I'm sure have gone out of business. But uh, as a general rule, most everybody has survived well. So there you go. Thanks, Rick. thanks, Rick. How about you, Christian? How's my bird doing? I think you know, kind of like like Don and Rick. I mean, we adapted the office environment pretty quickly. Um, you know, maintenance of services was one of our big things from the get go. Um, you know, so shifting things around to make sure we could keep doing that. You know, we had some funds that flowed from the state uh, and through Oakland County that enabled us to deploy uh, equipment so that we could take our office fully remote if we needed to. So if we're in a position where, for whatever reason, we had to close the office completely. We were able to continue to, to service the public. Uh, definitely an uptick in, in permits, building permits, and, and that type of stuff. Uh, you know, I think as people spent more time at their houses, they, you know, figure out a way to get the kids stashed in another room as quickly as possible so that you could have Zoom calls and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, we worked really well with, with the DDA and, and the Milford Business Association as well from, from a business standpoint. Uh, to, to deploy things pretty rapidly throughout the downtown. I mean, I, you know, with, with the restaurants, you know, in the, a year ago, having the, the prohibition on in-person in dining, I mean, I think it was a matter of, of a couple of days before we had, you know, designated carry out, curbside carry out spots available. Um, you know, shortly after that, I think early June, we were able to work with the DDA on some flexibility with, for outdoor dining. Uh, Village Council approved that. We've still got it going now. Um, you know, allowing the, the what we call parklets in the parking spaces where we've got the outdoor dining taking place there, working with Oakland County uh, through their program on the greenhouses and, and the igloos, uh, you know, being aggressive with that. I mean, you know, per capita, we probably got more than, than most places in the county. And I think, you know, it's Ann Barnett did a great job working with the county and working with our businesses, trying to get that stuff all lined up and, and get deployed. I know we work with the chamber on a couple of things as well. Um, but I mean, just the flexibility from, from the get-go. I mean, I, you know, I think government has a lot of times a reputation for being slow. And, and I think, you know, one of the things I'm proud of is that we were able to adapt quickly. And sometimes so much so that I think, you know, in the case of the outdoor dining and the parking spaces, I mean, we had everything lined up and ready to go. And then it was sort of this waiting game for the supplies to come in and, and be delivered. So, um, you know, that's probably a little bit atypical, but, um, you know, in some of those, we're looking at that now, looking at making that a permanent fixture. So, and, and what those rules look like. So there, uh, you know, the speed we were able to do some of those things with was, was key. And, you know, staff has been working incredibly well. I mean, we've, you know, had 
you know, we, we, one of the first things I did when everything was shutting down is we had to bring in a new director of public services. So, you know, it changes a lot of our operations and, and, you know, getting him down here and, and going. And so, I mean, it's been challenging for sure, but, you know, staff has stepped up and, and done what needed to be done. And then, you know, we built a skate park in the middle of it too. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Christian. How about you, Anthony? Can you talk to us about White Lake and um, how you pivoted? Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? First, yes. I'd like to thank everybody for having, inviting me here today. Um, it's an honor to be able to sit on this board. Um, our township basically, you know, when it, the initial shutdown was prior to um, myself taking office, um, after, soon after that, uh, we implemented staggered uh, shifts and we remained open and pretty much have remained open since uh, that had taken place. But we put all the, the PPE uh, safety precautions in. We have uh, our senior center shut down currently. So we took a, a couple of the workers from the senior center and the director, Kathy Gornier, and they help uh, <clears throat> sit up front and they talk to our residents and we screen them before they come in. And then we have a very um, a policy that just came out through our human resource department uh, manager, Kathy Drozier. And uh, we, we, we're pretty strict with it. We do our social distancing. So we've kept business um, open here and taken the appropriate precautions. Um, as Rick said earlier, uh, our building's continuing to, uh, it's flourishing right now. Uh, we have one developer, PH Homes, that have sold uh, 28 homes since last June. As you know, the real estate market's dried up due to COVID. Um, as he previously stated that uh, it's hard to get, uh, the cost is up with lumber, materials, uh, manpower. So we're, we're having those struggles in that area, but we're really adapting. Um, we have a really professional um, planning department and building department, and we've implemented new technology with through, through Nick uh, Spencer, where we have tablets that instead of bringing it inside, they shoot the information uh, via the web and we're able to streamline that process. So a lot of thinking outside the box with our staff. Um, we're, we're working harder with less, I can, I can tell you that. And um, it's like the model that one of the gentlemen said earlier, uh, we're adapting and overcoming with, with this as we go through. So um, it's, it's working out great so far, considering the circumstances. Great. Okay, so my next question is, since the COVID restrictions, have there been any positive or surprising outcomes? I like to keep things positive. So we'll start, we'll go with, uh, how about Rick this time? Yeah, when I, when I looked at that, that question, it was, uh, you know, I think the surprising outcome was how busy everything really still was. I, when when the, the first went uh, went down uh, back in March, um, the road was kind of, you know, with no cars on it, it was kind of freaky. <laughs> and then when they finally opened up and said, well, okay, you know, you can go to work according to... Uh, whatever the COVID guidelines were, then it became highly active again. Uh, but seeing people around and, and taking the precautions uh, that they needed to take, I think that's, I know there's some people that don't really uh, like to wear the mask or believe in the mask, but what I've seen in our community is that uh, it's pretty well masked up when, uh, and I think that's a consideration that everybody takes uh, in terms of each other. So, um, Based on what you might have heard on the news media, uh, it didn't seem like a, a half our population wasn't getting along with the other half and half believed, half didn't believe. Uh, in our community, it seems that uh, the consideration for each other is, is that uh, uh, I'll wear a mask and I'll uh, do it because I can, I'm concerned about others even if you don't believe it yourself. So uh, it's been a, a, a really positive um uh, outcome for such a just a highly highly freaky and negative uh, thing which we still have no idea what's going to go on with it so um, exactly. and I think that um, 
the restrictions are something that uh, humans just don't like to be tied down and uh, to, to see how the community it really has stood up for its, as I said a little earlier, stood up for its businesses and, and each other. Um, our, our community center is also uh, shut down, but uh, what's happened is we continue to run the, uh, the Meals on Wheels. The bus program uh, has continued to grow and help the, those seniors and that that need those rides. And, uh, you know, so those are really positive outcomes. And um, our senior um, center manager, Heidi, and, and the two people that she's continues to have work for, make a point of uh, staying in touch with all the seniors that uh, have been missing the uh, opportunity to come into the facility. So those are, the, those are really the positive outcomes. And I think the, the economy, <laughs> surprisingly, having that, uh, the growth that it, it has had and the stability it's had uh, is probably the biggest surprise for me. So, and I'm glad it, it's been able to do that. So, uh, how about you, Christian? What do you think? I think, you know, the outdoor dining certainly has been one. I mean, the expansion of that. Um, and, and like I said, I think, you know, there's going to be components of that that stick around. I think a lot of people, our parks got a ton of use uh, in the last year, too. I mean, a lot of the parks and the trails, they, they were busy to begin with, but I think even more so this last year. So, I think some people have been able to rediscover the, the parks and the assets in the community. So, and, and like Rick said, I mean, the support for the, the local businesses, I mean, we've seen a, a number of, you know, whether it's through the chamber or just, you know, just general citizens advocating for, you know, supporting local shopping local has been, has been good to see as well. Hopefully that sticks too. Anthony? Uh, yeah, just like Rick said, um, you know, we're, we're very active with our community and bringing the community together here in White Lake Township. So reaching out to the seniors has been one of our top priorities and Kathy gordon -Ear has been a, doing an extremely well job considering the restrictions. And, you know, we were attempting to do a um, slow reopen, but now due to the governor's uh, restrictions back with a 14 day quarantine and, and such matters as that, we've had to scale that back. But, you know, what I've seen being in public service for over 26 years, um, I see a a sense of community partnership, not just with White Lake Township, but with Highland, Milford, Commerce, and, and, and reaching the same common overall goal. You know, we work for the taxpayers and, and we want to be there for, there's a lot of seniors and that are, are shut in and, and not able to, to get out. And there's a lot of uh, problems there. So our outreach program, I believe is, is, is extensive and, and it's a very, important thing to the township. The restaurants, I, you know, we have a lot of support for that uh, via Facebook. Um, our Leo's in uh, White Lake has done a tremendous job staying open, um, servicing the, the customers in a safe way. I was just in there the other day, they have partitions. Um, so they're able to see more people in a safe manner. So overall, I'm really, I'm really pleased how the positivity, not just with just our community, the, the, the three surrounding communities I see, you know, because I'm not just in White Lake, I'm in Milford a lot and I'm in Commerce. So, so I think we're all working on a, on a, on a positive um, accomplishment goal. Thank you. How about you, Don? Well, I'll just reiterate what everyone said. Everyone's getting along well. Um, I I uh, got some equipment for Bakers of Milford. I only had one restaurant that qualified for any of this stuff. Got them propane heaters and <clears throat> hand sanitizers, things like that. Uh, my senior center, Nancy and Debbie, have a phone list and they call so many seniors every day to make sure someone is just in contact with them or uh, if something's wrong, did they get their shot? Any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I meet a lot of seniors on the street and they're beating me up saying, when are you going to open the senior center? Because that was their meeting place. They did knitting and crocheting, card playing. I mean, all kinds of activities. And they're chomping at the bit to get back in action. 
well, I'm waiting for someone from Lansing to say it's okay now. Um, haven't had haven't had any complaints, um, and I and I do hit all the restaurants. I only I mean, Sunday. <laughs> I mean, everything that you're all saying, we at the chamber has have seen as well. Um, it can look negative in um, maybe our social media, but when you're out and about in our communities, um, I live in commerce and, and I'm, you know, we're in White Lake and uh, Highland, Milford, where I'm all over the place and I haven't seen anything but positive, you know, stressful positive, <laughs> right? So um, that's great. And, and it uh, kind of makes you smile at our humanity right now. Um, the next question I have for you is, where do you see our community businesses, especially retail and restaurants this summer? Now, I know this is coming on a, a moment when I wrote this, um, you know, we hadn't heard from our CDC, our national CDC director, and I'm wondering what the governor is going to say today. And I know this is projection. I understand that. But where do you see our businesses um, in the next four months? And then we're going to address events later. Let's not go into events right now. I'm purely talking about businesses. And it doesn't just have to be retail and restaurants. It can be any other um, business that, that is pertinent to your community. Um, this time we'll start with, uh, uh, who did we start with last time? Christian, can you start today? Right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I gave up a long time ago trying to guess what was coming out of Lansing. So yeah, uh, we'll see. Everybody. We'll see today at three, I guess. But um, I, I mean, I, I think it's going to be, you know, it's got to be just being flexible, continuing to be flexible, continuing to you know, from our standpoint, it's, you know, as, as these regulations come out, how can we help the businesses adapt to whatever those regulations are and whatever those rules are and, and how can we do it quickly? And I mean, I think that's, you know, that's where my focus is. That's where our focus is and we'll continue to be there. I mean, at some point, you know, you hope it's sooner rather than later, we're back to, to normal ish. <laughs> and, uh, you know, until we get to that point, it's, it's just about being flexible and, and continuing to do what we can to help. So, um, but I, yeah, I won't venture a guess. I, I gave up on that a while ago. How about you, Anthony? Uh, do you have a crystal ball that we don't know about? You know, the Federal Reserve came out with interest rates, speculating that they're going to come, uh, the interest rates are going to remain low in the next, I think till 2023 is what I, what I read. Um, I have a lot of friends that are in the restaurant business. A friend of mine owns, uh, several Culver's, um, he just switched his business model to more drive-through and actually he was up a million dollars in sales. Um, I have another friend that is opening a chain of restaurants, which he will be coming to White Lake Township in the next year. Um, he's looking at different properties. So there's a lot of interest. Um, I believe this one in three, they said back a few months ago, restaurants would not survive. Uh, I believe I'm optimistic. I like to be the eternal optimist that they will, once people are vaccinated and as, as time goes on, I believe that we're going to see a boom in the retail and restaurant business in our local base, you know, areas. Um, we have another business that's coming to White Lake Township. Uh, it's called uh, the UPS store. that will be located in one of our empty real retail spots over by Kroger. So there's a lot of buzz out there. And I think there's people sitting on their money right now, kind of speculating what we we're speculating what's going to come out of Lansing, what's going to be restrictive and what's not. Um, as, and this will, this will soon pass eventually. I think you'll see, a, you'll, you'll see an upward scale with businesses and retail because people have been cooped up and, and, I, and our parks is one of the earlier comments were made. If you go in on one of the parks on the weekends, you'll see a lot of people. You can't buy a bicycle right now new. I, you, you'd have to find one used. A lot of canoes, a lot of uh, kayaks, things are outdoor such activities. Wilson Marina, for example, they, they are having record boat sales. So I, I think you're going to see a lot of pent up um, people that are willing to go out and spend. That's my outlook on it for our communities. Thank you. Um, how about you, Don? 
Well, it's very, a very, very positive uh, thing with the businesses. I was doing Tootsie Rolls Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on Main Street, and there was so much foot traffic and car traffic. It was, uh, everyone was busy. And it wasn't just going to one store or one restaurant. I mean, everyone was busy. Um, our trails are being used like crazy. The parking lots are full up and they're parking wherever they can now. Um, just, I do, I do my fair share doing the restaurants. Uh, <laughs> I was at Duke's Monday night. <laughs> but uh, it's very positive uh, with the businesses. I've talked to a few business owners that they say it was looking pretty bad when it first happened, but now everything's kind of smoothed out and everybody's going along good. Everybody's making some money. That's good. That's great. How about you, Rick? Yeah, I think I, I think it's actually going to be as good as um, when we thought it was the worst case scenario, um, and I th I think that probably a good share of the restaurant thing is most people don't even know how to cook anymore. I think <laughs> so. We we go out and and uh, served in restaurants. Mine's not. The way. My wife is a great cook, but uh, she works. She's a CPA and self employed and. Her business has, has rolled right along and she's had to change, modify how she approached it, but uh, still is able to have, keep all the clients and, and which when you think about small businesses that she deals with, there's been very few that have gone out of business. Um, and I think there's another change there that uh, by having so many people working from home, uh, you know, I, a lot of the major corporations are going to continue that. So those people may be forever working out of home. So that's going to change how people interact in their local community. Um, you're not going to drive to Southfield to go to a store when, uh, when you were doing it before because you were going to your office. You'd shop in that area a lot of times. So now it's you're going to be sticking around your local uh, area and, and using those retail spaces. So... And I think they've uh, they've adapted well, um, so I think it's going to be a lot better. And I think that, uh, as they use the term herd uh, um, immunity, I think that is going to happen. The more people that get shots, uh, um, I think it'll be important uh, that we, as many that can get their shots, and I think that's going to change the behavior as well. So people will be, feel more comfortable about uh, um, engaging in community. So. Um, I, I think it's it's going to be uh, a decent year, and I think that we've all just adapted incredibly well to this. Not that anybody wants it to continue this way, but we've adapted to it. And um, ironically, I think it's doing exactly what we're doing. A lot of it is because people can still see each other and talk with each other like we are with this Zoom. So this... Uh, the Zoom thing makes me think of the, the movie um, Wally. -E. I don't know if anybody's seen Wally. -E. It's W A L L dash E, and it's a um, <laughs> about a little machine that gets left on Earth to clean up all the garbage after we the humanity's destroyed it, and uh, the people from Earth go up in a spaceship. Well, you, you really need to see this thing because it it really is uh, done a few years ago. And it really has pinpointed uh, how we interact with each other. This on this spaceship, uh, all the people are zooming around on little Jetson type uh, devices, and they're talking to each other on computer screens, even though they're right next to each other. And uh, so, I hope that that isn't the way we end up in reality. That we we can't communicate only on electronic devices, but it has been able to allow us to be able to see each other and, and get, get at least a 2D sense of, uh, of some kind of reality. And uh, at first I hated it, um, but I have to admit that our board meetings are easier to do and we get more people attending them. So there's some benefits that I think are positives that have come out of that. Um, People can sit at home, and I even you get to watch them eat their chop suey and stuff with chopsticks sometimes. But um, still, they're there listening and engaging. So th this is a good thing, and uh, 
what we're doing today is a, the perfect example of that. So um, I think this is uh, is going to help. Um, uh, it'll help repair uh, some of the damage that has been done by not being able to personally interact. So I'm the, that that's interesting. You say that um, we at the chamber uh, had a little. Uh, we did a video of businesses that pivoted. Um, and they did it very fast because we did this video in, in January and we highlighted some of our um, area businesses that uh, are just doing tremendous jobs and, uh, and keeping themselves relevant during this time. And I can see where in the future, when everything comes back to normal, which it'll be a while, but when it does, it's only going to enhance their business on what they've done during this time. I'm sure a lot of people will be left with now two business models and they're going to keep it. So it's really, I think it's kind of exciting if you, if you can look at anything about this time being exciting as that, right? Okay, so my last question and then everybody, before I ask that question, you can start thinking of questions that you might want to ask our leaders and um, you can even put some in the chat if you want. Uh, but my last question is, and this is because uh, I am a special events manager here at the Yon Valley Chamber, and we are um, in charge of Milford Memories. And every day we get, I don't know, five phone calls. And every time we're out, what's going on with Milford Memories, right? So my question is, where do you see our community events in the remainder of 2021? What is your vision of that? Um, and that's a selfish question and sorry, but I'm gonna ask it. Um, how about you, Anthony? We'll start with you. It's a, narrow, a very good question because yesterday I was with, meet, meeting with uh, the supervisor and treasurer and we were talking about this and we were before the government or it could have been two days ago, but the governor came out with her uh, new policy as far as COVID. Uh, we were getting ready and we still plan on it opening up our pavilion and our ball diamonds and we have a plan to do so. Um, again, I'm an optimistic person, so we don't control uh, Lansing, obviously, but um, we're taking the approach as, as far as outside events, as long as we're filing protocol with the safe social distancing and uh, we can remain that intact and, um, and things don't spin out of control as the numbers uh, are increasing. Um, Safety is paramount for us, but we're keeping an optimistic approach. We have a great plan to do so outside. So, and again, as more people are getting vaccinated day by day, my belief and hope will be that by, by July, that you know this is gonna be less restrictive and definitely outdoor activities, you know, it's a, mu a must. And going to the previous conversation about mental health, um, someone who brought up, you know, we're doing these meetings, you know, via Zoom, but what they're finding out that there's not a lot of synergy going over the computer as you would have in that office setting or that team environment. And I know that myself, I like to be in person and be able to speak. We were we had the opportunity to meet up uh, a week or so ago with the board members. And I really enjoyed having the chance to see everybody face to face, seeing Rick, Don and Christian and the other board members. Um, you, you just, you get that interpersonal communication. I think that we're lacking with Zoom. So I'm looking forward to getting back to that. Right. I, I agree with you on that. Uh, we had a Milford Memories meeting this week and um, people were almost in tears. <laughs> I mean, it was that dramatic. It really was. Um, how about you, Don? Well, we've signed all the contracts for the concerts in the park, so we'll wait and see what happens there. Uh, we're planning on doing our drive-in uh, movie and we're planning on doing the uh, regular movies but it all depends on the words that come from Lansing. Uh, we're moving forward with the Memorial Day Parade uh, just in case we're allowed to have that through uh, the AMVETS and the American Legion and Veterans of Foreign Wars. We're working on uh, uh, our Flag Day sales on Main Street and working on one that's in June, and then we're working on one for April 24th for the VFW, AMVETS, and uh, the American Legion. 
they started meeting at the VFW Hall for the AMBETS. American Legion, they're still on and off with their meetings, but all in all, the, I think the events will um, start taking place and everyone will be happy. Yeah, so. Yes, they will. <laughs> um, how about you, Rick? How about Highland? Well, we're, uh, we didn't have a lot, don't have a lot of events uh, planned out, but we, we did postpone our fireworks until September 4th. Um, I think that uh, part of it is we've got construction going on at the school and we're going to be tearing up our uh, our own town hall this possibly this summer. So um, putting it off till September 4th, I think uh, it'll the school will be done with their work and we have it on school property there by 59. So uh, we're going to shoot for September 4th. I think there'll be uh, a lot more open uh, <laughs> things will be better then. A lot more people have had their shots and stuff. Um, be a safer event. Um, <clears throat> Tammy Flowers and uh, a few others on our, our committee for um, um, events uh, are still talking about our Founders Day, which I think is the 15th of May. Um, that one's a little touch and go. We're not sure how we're going to do it, but we're, we're kind of pushing forward. And then uh, concerts in the park, uh, EA, I think is still kind of toying with that. The, the, the numbers thing with, for open spaces at uh, 350 or whatever that number is, uh, we wouldn't have any problem with that. Um, that's right around where, what we get at this time. So, uh, and there's plenty of room for social distancing where we have it. Um, I think that uh, that's pretty much where we're at on our our events. I, one of the things that uh, I would probably for myself, but um, we have to be uh, very conscious in the relationships involved with Don and Christian. And they probably know the same thing. That if township officials make a decision to do something that against the the um, recommended rules, uh, we can become personally liable. And wow. our insurance uh, company made it very clear to us that we have to be, we will not be covered personally um, if we do things against the rules. So uh, it sounds like we're being uh, a little bit stiff, but um, I, I don't need to be personally liable. So I have to be very careful of that. And so that's why some of the stuff that uh, we're looking at, we got to make sure fits in the guidelines, don't push the envelope, or we could be uh, held responsible for it. And um, can I ask you, Rick, is that response uh, personally responsible just um, you guys or the boards as well? Um, I don't know about like the chamber, the chamber would have a different. No, thing. I mean your township boards and your. Oh, yeah. Township board members could be held personally liable. Okay. And that is, that is if somebody decides that they got COVID from, and we caused it, it right. not real likely, but, you know, don't open the door because right. there's plenty of litigious people out there to, to jump on a bandwagon. But um, I think it's just follow the guidelines and you'll, you will be all right and we can uh, stick with it. But uh I was very surprised about that because we had talked about it last year. We wanted to do concerts and uh, um, we almost <laughs> our attorney and our, uh, our insurance company came back and said, you, you better re rethink that. You'll be personally liable. So, and a lot of people don't, don't know that. So. Uh, right. Yeah. The, the, there's a lot of our, the public doesn't understand the ramifications of that and right so christian i have left you for last of course <laughs> <Out> of, <laughs> we we have events in, no it's uh i mean i i think you know kind of what rick was just saying i mean there's you know you've got the you've got the public health orders coming down from the state and to the extent that events can comply with those and and hopefully some of those things as we go through the summer um, I think Anthony said earlier, you know, July on, I mean, I think, you know, you've started to hear this narrative of, you know, right around 4th of July and, and on, you know, things should start to be kind of on the upswing. So I feel a lot more confident about the events later in the summer, but 
we've had council approved at their last meeting. They approved some of the early uh, events, uh, you know, contingent on, on being able to meet those state health orders. And, uh, you know, we've got some smaller, you know, we've got the mirror jazz band's going to be playing in the amphitheater. And so, you know, some return to normalcy on some of those things, but, you know, definitely the bigger events. I think as we go through the summer, it'll be a little bit more, I'm a little more optimistic on those, you know, the early events, the early parades, things like that, you know, there's going to be some restrictions in effect. We don't know what those are yet. Um, you know, we're six weeks out from, from Memorial Day still. So, you know, hopefully things change and, and we're able to do some things there, but uh, you know, we need some loosening up of, of the, the health orders in order to be able to make those events happen. Um, can, I, can I ask you if you've thought about provisions for some of the events that you've um, okayed, or is that totally I, on the I mean, I event think, planners? you know, it, it's really just following the, I mean, if you look at the state guidelines, it's, you know, they, they articulate pretty well there. You know, there's limitations on, on gathering size. You know, the event organizers have to take actions to be able to make sure that they can you know, ensure that, that people participating in the event are following social distancing, following mask guidelines. Um, you know, the food is a big one. A lot of the events that we've got have food and, and beverages as part of them. And so, you know, the same rules apply as, as would apply in a restaurant. I mean, you've got to keep groups six feet apart. You've got to have some separation in there. You've got to have people wearing masks, uh, you know, until, unless they're eating or drinking, you know, and so it's making sure that the event organizers have those protocols in place. And so, you know, we're working with people as best we can, but I mean, some events just, you, you've got to have loosening of those restrictions. I mean, uh, you know, we've had conversations, you know, the chamber in our office, I, you know, fortunately for things like Milford Memories, it's later in the summer. And so, you know, you've got a lot of big festivals. Ann Arbor's got their art festivals before then. Traverse City's got their Cherry Festival. You've got a lot of local festivals that take place, you know, so at least it's far enough out that, you know, as we're going through that, we can look at, okay, what did they do at this event, you know, that, that in order to be able to make it happen safely and, and follow the guidelines and, you know, what weren't they able to do and what adjustments need to be made. And so, you know, for some of those bigger events later in the season, I'm a little more optimistic. Things may not look, you know, like they used to, but, you know, hopefully they look a lot different from last year when we didn't have any of these things happening. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, so everyone, um, I'm going to open it up and if you, or why don't you unmute yourself if you have a question or you can type a question into our chat and um, we can try and answer some of your questions. And I got one uh, comment if, I, if you, you don't mind. Um, sure. You know, what, what, what's interesting is, is that uh, as government uh, agents, we have to look at these restrictions and requirements. And I think that the population, what, what has come out of this is the people that feel comfortable will go ahead and do those things, whether it, you know, the governor or somebody de deems it right or wrong. And so as long as, you know, we can be dealt guidelines that are, are um, less restrictive or, or restrictive in a way that we can manage them, you know, especially like the, the, the Milford memories, you're going to get less people show up. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because uh, sometimes those events can get so huge that people can't move, you know? So um, I think that it may prove to be uh, maybe one of the best events that you have because you'll have people there that feel comfortable with being with each other and feel comfortable in those environments. And, and they're going to, most of them will, I, I'm sure will do the right thing. So um, I think it's a positive thing. So, and, and what we have to do is, as Christian said, look at uh, Traverse City and see what they did and how, how successful they were and how many people showed up and right. those are the examples for the, the whole state. So, Rick, uh, I think you're really positive and being optimistic. I think if we had Milford Memories, if we get to have it, it's going to be the biggest one we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I just think people will come for it from everywhere. That's my prediction of it. Well, that's good. All right. Well, I'll shut up and let uh, somebody else. Uh... <laughs> we, we can throw some money down on that. <laughs> um, how about anybody else? Who has some questions? Who has a question? You can unmute yourself and. Nobody? <laughs> 
That's right. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, okay, Jeff. Not really a question. Just want to applaud all you, um, all you leaders, because you guys are doing a wonderful job. Um, yes, COVID has been upsetting to a lot of people, but yeah, it was a little unsettling at first. But all the efforts that you guys have done towards making things more user friendly, so to speak, uh, I've always been felt very comfortable going out. And I think, like what Rick mentioned, was that you know I wear masks because I want to make sure everybody's comfortable. I've been tested many times, never tested positive, but just that using common sense and, you know, all the efforts you've put forth, looking at other towns, what are they doing? You know, you guys are all doing a wonderful job. Thank you for all your efforts and I applaud you. Yay. Anybody else? Randy? Hi, everybody. Yeah, I just... Um... As, the, as a guy who's supposed to be working in the community and doing events and that sort of thing with the Huron Valley Community Coalition, I can feel a lot of what you, what it's like to, to have your plans upended and then not actually have a, a very good plan B. And then discovering how creativity and um, uh, flexibility can really lead to some, some pretty outstanding outcomes. And so I won't go into the stuff I'm really proud of about our organization, but I will say that like you guys um, in all your communities, um, the people have come together to really to really help us get through this thing. And and uh, I applaud you because I, I I think government gets ripped on a lot about being inefficient and and uh, um, well I guess we've learned I hope we've we've learned that that's not true now. Um, and I just wanted the only question I really had was I, as I see you guys all coming together like this, I think about the area that we serve, which is the boundaries of the Huron Valley Schools, and and how um, with all these different communities feeding into the school district, um, it's sort of like one of the few uh, entities that that pulls us all together in our schools. So I don't know. I, don't, I was kind of curious about: Do you guys get together on a regular basis, or will this be the start of something good like that? Because I think it's really important that. Um, there's uh, there's some communication amongst these communities. It sounds people. like Dukes is a meeting place for these guys. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, I mean we've we've had uh, Dr. Salah actually early on. Um, we started kind of doing these via Zoom, where we'd get together. And I think early on it was you know about every other week or so. You know we've kind of spread it out as it's gone on. But I mean we're you know we've been in touch fairly regularly, sometimes in person, a lot of times by Zoom. Um, but, you know, I, you know, I know when, whenever we've done anything with the offices, you know, sharing a building, Don and I have had conversations uh, about that type of stuff, too. So, well, we we've had meetings with Dr. Slot, too, and I, I have to applaud his leadership coming in to a new district like he like he has. Um, he's taken the safe approach, but but the smart approach at the same time, because, you know, our, our, our kids, I have uh, three kids in the Huron Valley District and it's very, very hard on them to be able to communicate with their friends. Their world has been turned upside down and our, our children should be, our, they're, they're our legacy coming up. And I think under his leadership, his uh, staff and thinking outside the box, he's done a tremendous job. And I'd like to applaud him for that because it's not an easy job when you're dealing with, you know, thousands of uh, kids and parents and emails that are flying at you as a leader at a school district. So I'd like to commend him for a job well done. Yeah, I, I have to agree 100% with that. I, it, in terms of the school system, Dr. Salai pulling us together, um, they had some great things come out of this. A community sharing thing, uh, um, finding a home for them in Highland uh, was a result of that, of meetings with uh, the village that, uh, and Township of Milford and Don and Christian and and uh, White Lake Township were at Coa myself. Um, that that wouldn't have happened. Uh, so it, it was a, a great e event because of that. And the other thing is is that and ironically, I don't know why um, Oakland County uh, Township uh, Supervisors has a group that's called OCATS, and we meet once a month. Um, we really should have the village managers and stuff involved in that as well uh, because they, they're a part of our townships. But 
this group of uh, supervisors that has met, that I've been a part of for eight years now, when I first got involved with it, I went, oh man, how, how are you going to, what, what's this going to be? You know, and what it really turned out to be was how close we all are to each other. And we, that once a month meeting, you, you look forward to it and you talk about each other's community. And the results are is that all of us have stayed very close to each other. And, uh, you know, so there's things that have come out of that, you know, of communities working together on, on projects. And, uh, you know, working with Oakland County and trying to make sure that uh, the county is is uh, responding to the local communities is is all happened through uh, these supervisors and and village leaders uh, uh, as Christian um, putting it out there. And I think that one of the the things that um, Randy kind of mentioned was as I think that my opinion on government is government is really right here with us and our boots on the ground because we deal directly with the people. The people in Lansing and the people up in Washington are so far disconnected from reality that uh, about as disconnected as the news media has been as well. And we've proven that we are, we are all connected here. And it's at the, the ground level, it's at the local government level where everybody knows everybody else and, and we can trust each other. And uh, I think that we get beat up to a certain degree by uh, what happens at the state and federal level and it's unfortunate. And it's too bad that the state and federal level can't look down the support team, which is we're the base of that pyramid and we are the, the solid rock foundation of it. And they need to look down and see who we are and see how we behave and how we do things. And maybe our federal and state governments uh, entities would act a little bit more uh, responsible to the rest of the, the um, electorate. So we have a great, I've had a great relationship with uh, Don and Christian and, and Anthony's new, but uh, Rick Kowal, uh, Gary Wall, I just go on and on with all the, the Oakland County uh, supervisors. And it's it's like it's a, we're all there for everybody in our community and not just our own, but everybody's community. So we're looking out for everybody. And uh, it's been a great opportunity. And it's a reason I ran for a third term is because I could see that uh, you can really do something here. And it's for those that voted for us. So um, that's great. Susan, how about you? Do you have a question? I see your hand is up. Uh, yes. Um, what I want to mention is that um, one of the things that Rick did that I really, really like, and he knows I've emailed him about this, he has his board meetings, his monthly board meetings on Zoom. And when I used to attend in person, I missed half of what's going on, mainly because I have a hearing problem. But um, I was wondering if the other managers and supervisors have also implemented their board meetings on Zoom for the benefit of their, their audience. You can get a lot more people that get involved when you have them on Zoom rather than trying to bring them into a center. They might be busy or have something at home or whatever. But I, I really like the Zoom board meetings. And I just wondered if the other um, members of the of the this committee are doing the same thing. Thank you. I, I can answer that for you. With White Lake Township, we just implemented a new uh, website through the supervisor, Rick Kola, and his executive assistant, Trish Pergament. And they've worked feverishly on this project for several months. So if you go on our new website, you can go past meetings, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, planning, and all of our meetings, and they're all on Zoom. So if you wanna look up any information there, it's very user friendly. Um, it was a well thought out project. And I'd like to compliment the supervisor's office for taking on such a cumbersome tax. But um, yeah, so we we do that at White Lake and I'm gonna guess that the other communities do as well. Is that um, live? In other words, are you doing it Zoom where people can actually like take part participate in the public part of it yes yes that's exactly it's alive it's on youtube for white lake township um if there's public comment you're able to go on such as a forum like this and raise your hand and ask questions 
um, follow just like you're you're there, but you're at your home. Okay. Um, so like like uh, Supervisor uh, Hamill said earlier, yeah, it's been a very hard adjustment initially, but as time goes on, I mean, as we speak, technology changes constantly. So I think all of our communities have done a great job keeping up with the technology and, and communicating with one other. Um, I consider myself fortunate to have that relationship with the other communities. And uh, most importantly, I'd like to give a lot of credit to our staff for thinking outside the box because I'm not gonna take credit for any of these ideas that we come up with. Uh, we're only successful by the people that we surround ourselves with and at White Lake Township, and I'm sure the other gentlemen will tell you, we've got a tremendous staff that work for us that are, you know, a lot of times public service is a calling. And a lot of people that work for these organizations and government uh, organizations, um, they're there because they wanna be there and they like to give back to the community. I, and I take great pride in that. I'm sure the other gentlemen do too. What about Milford? Milford Township's been doing Zoom since uh, April of last year. Planning uh, Commission uh, public hearings, Zoning Board of Appeals, our Board of Review, Parks and Rec. Everyone has been Zoom. Very good. We, we have as well. And I think, you know, looking long term, this is one of those areas where, you know, we're only able to do it now because the legislature amended the Open Meetings Act. And prior to that, there was a, an executive order from the governor. But, you know, that that Open Meetings Act provision sunsets at the end of the year. And it's right now it's contingent on a local declaration of emergency. So that's really the only way any of us can do that right now is through that local declaration. So but as of December 31st, that goes away at sunsets. And so you know, contacting representatives in, in Lansing and making sure that gets amended on a permanent basis. I think, you know, if this is, we've noticed an uptick. I mean, it's, you know, if you've got, you know, somebody home with their kids and they're trying to get the kids fed and get homework done and get the kids, you know, it's, it's most of us meet in the evenings and, you know, it's mm -hmm. not always the most accessible time of day. And so, I mean, we've seen better attendance, I think, on the virtual on average than, than we do in, at the in-person. And I think that's part of it is, you know, somebody can put the meeting on, they can watch it in the background, take care of what they got to take care of, you know, come back and jump in when, they, when, they're, when they're done. And so that flexibility, though, goes away as of December 31st. So mm -hmm. That's too bad. Now, can other um, areas, like if, if me from Highland wanted to um, monitor like a Milford Township meeting, would that would I be able to do that, or is it restricted only to residents? No, uh, there oh, for anybody. It is. Yeah, by by law, it has to be open to everybody. So. Oh, cool! I didn't know that. Good information. Thank you. That's all. How about anybody else? Do Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer, I'd like to thank you for setting this up. This was very informative, Great. and thank you to you gentlemen. You guys do a fabulous job for the community. So thank thanks you. to everybody. That thank was you, nice. Jen thank, thank you, you Jennifer. Jennifer. I appreciate you too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm so proud to be in this community. I really am. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joan. We appreciate it. And uh, it, now my head's going to get bigger because you've puffed us up too much. So, <laughs> <laughs> But you deserve it. Well, thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah can, I, uh, yeah, can I make a comment? Um, yeah, you know, I, I think one of the reasons why our communities have been so successful is, um, w w and I would like to, to compliment all of you on, is that you guys are accessible, right? I mean, we see you in town, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, we can, you know, we see you at the coffee shop, we see you, you yes. know, um, just, just in town, you know, I mean, and, and, and you know, and being accessible shows that you guys are in touch with what's happening. And then also, you know, of course, you know, having all the town meetings accessible to everybody too, which we just talked about, but, um, but, but each of you personally, it, it is really nice because we see you on the street, we see you in our neighborhoods. And um, that, I, I think that lends a lot of credibility, you know, when, you know, when you guys answer these questions and, 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 you know, and offer advice to us and just the management in general, but um you know, I just want to really thank you for that and not hiding away in the ivory tower, you know, <laughs> but um, I think that, you know, and the other thing too is I, I think our community in general too is 
so local oriented that I, I really think that our Huron Valley area that even just just us citizens, um, it's always top of mind to um, to support local. And um, but thank you guys for for being out there, being seen, being accessible to us, so we can have forums like this. Thank you. Do you know what the you know what the motto in Milford used to be and <laughs> still is. If you can't find it in Milford, you don't need it. That's right. <laughs> Let's change it to Huron Valley. <laughs> I'd like I'd like uh, I'd like to let you know too on our website. I have my cell phone. If anybody needs to get a hold of me for whatever reason, I put that out there. Um, just try not to call me at two thirty in the morning unless you need a ride home. <laughs> but um, but I have that out there, and we're all accessible within through our emails and our phones and uh, so feel free to contact any of the, the township board or, and or uh, the in-house officials. That's great. Anybody else? Okay, well, I think this was a success, don't you? Thank you all for coming and uh, thank you guys for, for showing up and, Thanks for and inviting sitting us. here thank and you. letting us talk to you. I so appreciate it. And Anthony, I do have your cell phone number in my... <laughs> <laughs> so thank, I really, really appreciate it. And I just will let you know that um, I have taped this. Um, it will be up on our YouTube channel. I am going to post it to Facebook. I will post it to all of the, uh, the Facebook... Um, community pages as well um and then it'll be in our e-blast and it will be on our youtube channel and on our website i'll put it on our website as well so uh so you can direct any of your friends or um that was, wasn't able to come today that weren't able to come i'm sorry um to to view it and maybe we should do this again in, in several months it, I, it seems like it hit a nerve um and i would love to do that if you guys are willing that'd be great maybe we can get commerce township as well that would be great. You did yeah. an awesome job. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it, Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a Have great, great day. Good afternoon, everybody. See you at Dukes. <laughs>